Hi everyone, this is Kimberly from the Markowski family and it's testimony time number two. And I'm going to share with you today my favorite story of God's faithfulness in my life. And it's just a story of blessing and his orchestration. And I'm excited for you to hear it. If that sounds good, you can tune in for that. Hi everyone, it's Kimberly again. I just wanted to Hi, it's Kimberly, here to share my testimony. Hi everyone, this is Kimberly. I'm excited to tell you about my life and my testimony, which is not one that would come across as exciting in any book, but it's a good story because it's about God and his faithfulness. So. Um, I'll start from the very beginning, 35 years ago. <laughs> Don't believe it's been 35 years, but it has. Um, I am adopted, which I love because it just shows from the start that God had a place for me and a purpose. And he directed my birth mother to um, give me up for adoption. She felt like she was being obedient to God and that she was supposed to give me a mother and a father. And that is where I ended up being adopted in California. And I felt like it has been the most perfect placement that it could have been because it was the Lord directing that. So I grew up in a home that was full of love and structure and orderliness and um, just a lot of learning and fun. I just loved growing up with my family and I have a younger sister and we, we're just 14 months apart because she's adopted also from a different family. So I had just an idyllic um, time growing up. I was a, a boundary pusher as a child, a small child, and um, it kind of flip-flopped by, I don't know, six or seven. I started to want to please my parents. Um, instead of being a naughty toddler, I wanted to say, I'm so sorry, can I start over? Um, I had a desire to make people happy and to be pleasing, which isn't a bad thing, but it can lead to some perfectionism like it did for me. Just the desire to never be wrong or make a mistake or have someone upset with you. Um, I just remember that being a pattern when I grew up with my parents. They were very consistent, loving parents um, that always were ready with the answers I needed and um, time for prayer and forgiveness and that was the type of environment I had because we had a healthy church family that we were a part of too and um, it was all so good but <laughs> my inner self still had this desire to please and that's how I saw God. Once I um, accepted the Lord into my heart, I was only four but I knew I wanted what my mom talked about when she she said, do you want to ask Jesus into your heart? And whatever I had heard up to that point so far, I remember thinking, yes, I do. And I remember that moment, however far away it was. Um, and once I had, you know, obviously that understanding grew, but once I had Jesus in my heart, I um, t started to think of God like as another parent almost, and I wanted him to just be happy. So it's like, just never sin, just never, <laughs> never mess up. Um, and that's kind of what took me through into my teen years. Um, I was at camp, which is such a wonderful place to uh, feel your heart and connect with God. Um, I was up at Hume Lake and I remember the speaker just saying things that started to get to your inner core and that Holy Spirit feeling of just discomfort and kind of nervousness and um, he was talking about a friendship with God and a relationship with God not being um, just distant or um, for the purpose of just pleasing God and doing things. And it was so new to me, but I, it was like this dawning, wow, Jesus wants to be my friend? Like I could talk to him about things or just, I don't know, like he's available at every moment just as if he was one of my friends here. And I just wanted that. And I remember praying with one of my youth leaders, Jen, and it was just from like that point on, I felt this closeness to the Lord that I could go to him with these 
teen angst issues and I started prayer journaling and I would just write and write and it was such a wonderful outlet and I loved that we had had this like new step forward and um, that kind of just led me through my teens. I was very busy because I was very blessed to be part of a, an amazing junior high and high school it was just full of busy wonderful activities with music and family and friends and it was just wonderful. I loved my childhood. It was great. Um, I cannot complain. Um, and then I was into college and studying to be a teacher. I had everything planned out. I had <laughs> the year I wanted to be married. I had the year I wanted to have kids. I had it all set and I was so sure that that was what was going to happen. Um, <laughs> and so, um, the relationship I was in at the time, again, I thought we're gonna get married. And when we came to a point, both of us separately, coming to a point of understanding, um, I don't think this, I don't think this is supposed to move forward. And it didn't make sense to me, but it was something I felt in my heart. And as I had been praying about the relationship that day, and that only later that day for him to say something and say, I don't think we're supposed to continue. It was enough confirmation that I was able to agree and then go and like deal with my life unraveling. <laughs> because at 20, I thought I was just three years away from the start of, you know, adult life as a teacher and a wife. And I could not really handle <laughs> me being without all of those things. So I just remember it was, it was, the hardest night of my life, which can sound so silly when people have been through deaths and just horrible tragedies in their life. I am so, so thankful that I did not have any abuse or anything bad in my life thus far. Um, but what it was, was me feeling that fear of not having everything set and, um, I cried a lot <laughs> and this was the night of, I just remember waking up in the middle of the night and remembering all over again what just happened and crying and it was just this like clear, clear moment where God said, like, I love you and I want to be your best friend and it was like this, <laughs> this just this amazing moment where I was like, oh, <laughs> just like 12 year old Kimberly had said, oh, I could be friends with Jesus. It was like. Oh, I could be best friends with Jesus. Um, did not expect to cry on camera, so there's that. <sighs> but it's so good. And um, however much longer it took me to process through all that change, from that point on it was like, oh, God gets me. He knows every feeling I'm feeling. He knows, he knew this was gonna happen. He knows where I'm going and I don't have to you know, I don't have to be a teacher or I don't have to be exactly who I thought I was going to be or, you know, things are so open now in this freedom of being single. And I just had a lot of learning and growing to do. And that is what happened in my twenties. <laughs> there was highs and lows and I, um, the whole time had a consistent family base and friend base that loved me. And, um, I felt like there was choices I made that were not good and there was points that were really amazing where God and I connected and I struggled to not have a church family and then found a place um, and Living Faith Fellowship was just a, a home. It was a small church and it was a place where I suddenly was rooted and I had people investing in me and holding me accountable and um, it just took those, you know, 10-ish years of me growing and learning. Um, but always knowing that God was faithful. And even when I had times where I knew I was making the wrong decision and I was sinning, even sometimes in the moment, and I would just think, oh, that Holy Spirit is so strong. Like, I know, I know, I know I can't do this. I know I can't keep doing this. Or even to the point of eventually, I remember thinking every time I sin, it just drives that wedge between me and God. And I have to pick, like, if I wanna be temporarily happy with this thing that I think is going to be as good as it is. And then dealing with, like, pushing away God for a while because I feel bad. Um, and I just began to want more to be close to God than to be in my 20s and make th choices that I thought would be temporarily pleasing. So 
all that to say, um, I got into my later 30s and oh, later 20s and just started to seek out what was next. And again, I just remember praying to God, I will do anything. I will go anywhere. I will like the most dramatic things that people cringe when I say, you know, I'll get cancer and then you can heal me and I'll write a book and I'll tell people about what you've done, whatever, whatever will bring you glory, God, I'll do it. Um, which to me was a big release of fear because again, Kimberly innately is still like, can we just have like a simple scenario of what I do and everything goes really well. Um, so I just left that open to God and it was clear to me that I was supposed to go into teaching and finish a credential that 10 years before I said, no thanks. Um, and I wanted to go and serve overseas with missionary kids and teaching them. And it was something that I liked the idea of doing for a couple years and figuring that out. Um, and I didn't have all the answers, but I knew that there was something in me that wanted to do more than just um, live in California and have a good life and just enjoy that. Um, and I met Adam at 30. And even though it's a different version of what I had thought I was gonna do with missions, Something in me just clicked. Like, you wanna you wanna serve the Lord like that too? Me too. Um, and he's a part of my testimony because this is the tail end of, of just me being more worldly and being okay with it because I had calluses. And he was so, I just remember thinking like, he's so sanctified. Like, he's so like, he is so serious. Like, he knows the word of God. He follows it. He says something when I'm not like, He's direct about it, but he's loving. Like it just, it pulled me up. Like when you're with people that are good for you, they're strong in the Lord. They pull you up to your, their level. And you're, you're thinking, yeah, this is, this is all true and good. I should have been here before. Um, and I just so thankful because I have just felt the Lord remove calluses and shown me things that before I thought were totally fine or really funny and I'm like, no, I don't feel that anymore. Like I actually desire to be more righteous. I want to follow his word and I and I want to do everything that he has in front of me. Um, whether or not it's for my pleasure, I want to do that because it's what he has for me. Um, now I live in this wonderful place of being a mother of two little people and to be married, I just still feel like it's too good to be true. Um, but from the beginning till now, I still am so thankful. I can't really believe like God was so good to me to start me there and bring me here. Um, that it's, it's the only thing I could do would be to go and serve him again, getting emotional. But missions is not about serving God because you need to or something. It's just that there's people out there that don't know his love and <laughs> I can't believe I'm crying this much. Whew. They say you still have hormones in your system after having a kid, so it's been eight months, but <laughs> I believe it. Um, people need to know how much he loves them, and there's people that don't even know that. And that is so hard to think about, and Adam and I both grapple with that. Can you imagine not having a Bible in your own language? Can you imagine just <laughs> going through life in fear and then dying? Like, it's horrible. So. Anyways, that's my story. <laughs> it's a story that God has been good throughout my entire life, despite um, me, despite my plans, despite my worries, despite my sin. He's just been faithful and good. And that's why it makes me cry because <laughs> I'm so grateful. Um, so yeah, that's all I really had to say. Um, I'm thankful to have a testimony that doesn't have the huge ups and downs that some people have. I used to think those were the most exciting, like, wow, that guy has a really good testimony. You know, drugs and now prison ministry, like, that's amazing. And I'm just kind of here, like, I love Jesus. <laughs> um, so um, I'm just thankful for the story I have and that God has laid this out for me now and I look forward to what's ahead. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Bye.